Hello, my name is Dominic Underhall House and welcome to another episode of Moonbreaker. In today's episode, we're going to be looking at a game between myself and Jester, and it is going to be trying out my first attempt at a proper list on the new experimental build. So, the list itself is the one that we looked at in our list building video, and I've made one small tweak to it. So, what I've done is I've actually removed Tona Mystic Manteo, and I've replaced him with Crankbait. And the reason I've done that is that Crankbait also generates a decent amount of Cinder. It's two instead of three, but has a little bit more pressure, so can apply some damage, can use the grappling hook, and generally is quite a useful unit. So, the point of this list is to come out of the gate swinging fairly early on. We're starting out with Taria. So Taria's a one drop now, and this version of it. And we've got Taria, Maximus in here as well, and then also looking at using Deadeye as well. So all three of these will come down turn one. And the idea is that combined with those three, which put out four damage on their own, we can use Taria's ability for free, but it, well, for, I say for free, using our Cinder onto Zax and get you know, an additional four damage. So we're looking at potentially dealing eight damage turn two, and that's sort of you know where we want to be coming out of the gates to try and maybe pick off an early unit. So to follow up from that, we've got Axel Pyro, which is now a two drop, but takes two Cinder to activate. So not easy to activate, but a very powerful unit. And we've also got Jailbreak as well, so in this version Jailbreak is also a 2-drop. It's not something we're going to be using particularly often, but as and when it's useful, absolutely going to be putting that down. So to follow that up, we've got Crankbait, who we spoke about previously, and we've also got Aria here, who is going to be our follow-up 3-drop, just for a bit of that range pressure. And then for 4-drops, we've got Shrapnel for, again, just more pressure without taking any Cinder usage. And Turncoat, because Turncoat can be just such an impactful unit if we need it to be, that that's absolutely worth, you know, keeping in mind as an option. And lastly here we've gone for Florio Lancer. So Florio is here to be a big endgame threat and hopefully you know, take down the opponent gradually in the endgame. So this is what we're going to play against Jester. I've actually already played the games. I think it's quite an interesting so I played the game rather. It's quite an interesting one. Hopefully you guys will enjoy watching it. I definitely made a few misplays early on but I actually think it was a really interesting game. It goes very close to going one way or the other. So hopefully you enjoy it. If you do please feel free to hit that subscribe button drop a like on the video, let me know where you think my biggest mistake was and where you think I could have turned the game around. And if you really do want to support the channel, please go ahead and hit that you hit that link down below to the Patreon. It's the best way to support me, but most of all I'm just glad you're here, and I'll see you in game. Okay, so we're going to go into our first PvP game that should B versus Jester. So we've queued up just to try this out and see how it goes. This is using, like I said, just basically the exact same list that we came up with in the list building sort of guide that we did. But I've changed one thing, as I've changed Tona Mystic Manteo. I've swapped it for Crankbait, just because it's something that has a little bit more impact on the early game and the actual ability to use Crankbait's you know, pull seems really, really relevant with the removal of assists. So I want to start out with the same early game and see how it functions versus Jester. Because I'm really curious as to what we can what we can put out here. So what what's the lowest modifier we can get? We can get like a minus twenty-three, I guess. Or yeah, let's just get it for minus twenty-three, try and take a hit. Twelve percent. Not quite. And then I'm gonna go with the exact layout that Jester wasn't particularly a fan of and see how well this works. Because I'm, I think this has got potential, but I'm not 100% certain. So let's just go like this. And I want to see how this works out, because I don't know what the right call is here. Like, Just has played a lot more of this than I have, and I'm really interested to see sort of, you know, how this is going to function. I didn't really want to use anything here, because there was no point in me pulling myself forward or anything like that. I kind of just want everything exactly where it is, otherwise I'd have used my two Cinder. I don't want to place a mine into another Zax. Okay, so that's the yep, that's them pulling back behind here. That's absolutely reasonable. I think that's a pretty solid choice for you know, not wasting your cinder. There we go. I just I genuinely just don't see much point in us using it. So let's see what Jester does. So there's a good chance we can get a decent angle here, but we don't have many rapid fire shots. Okay, so there's crankbaits, so that's the additional cinder generation, and they've probably got one more unit to follow, which is most likely gonna be like an axle pyro. It's an Axel Pyro. Okay, so we don't get any good angles here. We've got like a minus 32 here, but we can't get that near to Axel. So honestly, it's almost tempting just to shoot over at one of these and just try and get a good angle there. Yeah, 
and just send units up in this general direction. And I think I want to be aggressive. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just deploy our own crankbait down towards the front, maybe. Actually, maybe, maybe let's just deploy the crankbait here to avoid other things getting pulled. And we're all just going to move up into this little pile and see what kind of mess we've got here. Again, I don't really feel the need to use any cinder here. I mean, nothing's got a good shot. Might as well. Yeah, 0%. I shouldn't have placed crankbait down first. That was a bit of a mistake. But I'm still getting used to this. If they want to pull our crankbait out, that's pretty reasonable. I do feel like the objectives feel almost pointless with the... Uh, uh, like, in as it stands at the moment... There we go. So this is what we're expecting here, them to put a lot of pressure onto our crankbait. But what we want to do is then put more pressure onto them in return. Because their axle pyro has obviously got the potential to be quite impactful here. Their crankbait is going to pull ours. Yep. And they're just going to go for a couple of things here. But then that leaves us the option of pulling their things into the open. So that's what we're going to do with crankbait here. Obviously they're probably going to use the pull to pull something away. Or some place something to block us. Yeah, there we go. So that's pretty reasonable there. Okay, so Beatrice is obviously something we can't really deal with yet. But what we might be able to do is get some good angles onto there. Let's see, where's the angles on this? I wish the text wasn't exactly there. Yeah, maybe we can't get it onto Axel Pyro either. Interesting. So we are pretty much blocked. So we're going to have to basically pull with Grab Disc over here to get Beatrice out of the way, and that brings her closer towards other things we don't want her near. But I think that's worth it. And there's Stitchy. Okay, so this is the the full control list that Jester was thinking about. So I think what we do here is actually just go for... This is the grab disc option. Come over here and try and get... So it's very awkward to tell if we've got line of sight onto their Axel Pyro or not is the problem here. So I think we do here. Yeah, this should be fine. So the question is, with this damage here, we've got one, two. So let's just... I was just oh, hang on. That was the wrong option. Oh, well. Let's just go for... Oh, no, don't want to see for mine. Where's Maximus gone? There we go. So we'll just get a couple of shots in here. So there's still no great Beatrice shot, and we want to play something like... I'm okay with just placing like an Aria down this way. And maybe a sleeper mine on their Beatrice just about here. Give them a worse angle. There we go. So obviously they can pull this into us and kill us, but that's fine, they could kill us anyway. This just makes it a little bit more awkward to come in this direction, which is fine. Yeah, crit back. One extra damage on Beatrice. So here they can pull our captain and try and block us in, but if I were them, yeah, this is this was a mistake. Like, I, I'll be honest, I forgot that I was playing against the Zax. So that's pretty reasonable here to accept that that was a mistake, because that's going to hit four of my units. <laughs> Yeah, that is a huge mistake. I just, my brain didn't even comprehend that I was playing against Zax. So I've actually, if you, you may have noticed from sort of the trending videos, I've not actually played that much PvP recently, especially not on this version of the server. So that's an interesting choice, being willing to take two damage there to deal two here. And they missed it anyway, but they've got the Stitchy over here to sort of follow up. And we do lose our crankbait here, so we are going to be as into this. We're going to be having to apply the pressure elsewhere. This is fine, because we can just move around and do the same back to them again if they place a mine here, because we can just shuffle things in this direction. That is fine. And honestly here, I think we're going to lose crankbait, but we can just start putting damage onto Zax potentially, but Stitchy is then going to be an issue. 
So we're up to four. We lose a couple things. So what do we want here? I think here's an interesting one because I actually think we want to jailbreak. But to do so, I think what we actually want to do is go for some interesting choices here. So we're going to take some risks. We'll shoot here. I'm going to move back over this way and then what I'm going to do is grav disk these together. I don't think we can get crankbait in there so we might as well not give them free movement. Get this damage in here. Nice little crit. Okay, we're getting the damage onto that, that's nice. I'll be honest, I thought that was my Maximus, so I forgot Maximus was in addition to that as well, so it's just pushed damage here. And then, so Jailbreak isn't great here, but Axel Pyro could be really good if we keep it over this direction. Sleeper Mines are bad. We might as well Ozo something. We'll Ozo ourselves here. There you go, so we've got them down to 10, so they need to probably use Cinder to heal, and then we can try and be aggressive to follow up, but we're going to lose Taria here almost definitely, because Taria I should have tried to move further away, which is a large amount of our pressure. So Zax is going to want to run as far as he possibly can here. Yeah, so they're going to be... Okay, so Grav Disc I think can get them in range to heal, but they're going to have to try and be quite cautious here. We've got double buff onto Aria if needs be. I, I'll be honest, I did just throw sort of stuff together slightly. Let's see what we go. So, the reason we've left this, by the way, is because we wanted to play either Turncoat or Shrapnel into this. Okay, yeah, so Beatrice is going in. It does get us a, a bit of extra damage taken, but what it doesn't do is save their Zacks. So, they can pull things over. Yep. Question is okay, they're gonna heal Beatrice or oh they're just out of range of Zax. That might be a mistake there. We could potentially have a, a bit of extra damage coming in there. Okay. So this might be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this could be ten damage. Yep, there you go. Something to defend, so that makes sense, and pull themselves away. Also makes sense. So we're gonna Ozo's onto Max here. Max is just going to take this shot. And we're going to start moving this way. Pop over here for a bit of damage. Got a nice crit, which is always good. So here we can, can pop over here. The question is, can we pull them down far enough to get line of sight this way? Or what can we do with Axel Pyro? Funnily enough, I actually think Axel Pyro might be a useful one over here. Oh. Well, that's pretty awkward. That didn't go anywhere near where we wanted. So I guess we just hide here then. So we can't get onto them. What we can do is just pop some pressure down in this direction. Pop a shrapnel down over here. Honestly, I think we've activated everything we can. We're obviously in a lot of danger over here. This is like a Ralph Wiggum, I'm in danger situation here. They have to heal their captain. There's not much else they can do. I did not think that would be in range. I didn't check. I should have checked. But So Beatrice here is... We're at the whim of them moving up and pulling this in. But we've got a good amount of damage around. We might be able to start clearing up their board soon, maybe? It's like, Stitchy is the big thing that needs to go here. Yeah, so they can actually hit here, flip that, or pull into these, kill both of these, and actually yeah, they can kill everything here. Yeah, this is a really good turn for, for Jester here. They can kill our entire entire sit -up, set up here. Oh no, they pulled, they pulled uh, Chuck away. That's not good. So Chuck being pulled away is actually really bad for for Jester here, because if it hadn't been, they could have killed both of these. 
I guess they've got this. Oh, they can maybe pull it into range. Oh no, it's out of line of sight, it looks as well, maybe. So yeah, maybe that crankbait toss was a mistake here, but it could work if they get line of sight. Okay, so can we get it? Is Detonia going to do... Oh, they've got not enough cinder for Detonia, so... I think here we just have to go for the... Uh... Ooh, they're going to heal one. Okay, so can we deal eight? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So in theory, we've got nine damage here. So we can just go for it and hope. So bring ourselves up in this direction. 87 on that angle. Okay, we did hit it. That's nice. So let's go with this. But Fire Flame was two, and this is two. So we don't have enough Cinder to use it. So we're just going to have to keep trotting, prodding, uh, plodding along, rather. So here I think we actually have to kill Stitchy. Um, we've only got Fire Flamer left. Can't use it. So what if we just place? Right. So I'm gonna have to still keep moving away. The only thing we can play here is actually gonna be this, which lets us grab these things over here. I actually made a mistake there. I didn't realize that was a cinder. I should have tried to find a way onto the cinder, and then use that here. So. We are probably going to lose this because Jester can just sit back and heal a bunch with their toner. But that was a really close game. I like that. I feel like I definitely misplayed a few times. But I'm happy with that. Like, this is my first actual PvP game with this list. It's only like my fourth or fifth version. I think fifth or sixth game maybe with this entire format. So I'm pretty happy how this has gone. So Jester's going to heal nine here if they've got any sense. I think Jester's a good enough player to know that this is... Uh, how you end the game is just by passing the game, passing the turn and leaving me trying to deal 14 damage. And now that puts me in a position where I have to start being more aggressive uh, on their units rather than their captain. So obviously we probably can't deal with Tona. We just ignore Tona for a while and just start chipping in elsewhere. Okay, them crankbaiting us is interesting. This gives us some good angles to maybe get some damage out over here. We can start just, yeah, dealing damage as and when we can. This deals a little bit here. Luckily if they hit, we hit back, and that actually gives us a pretty solid option here. Chuck's going to cl clear up this, yeah. And there comes Peacemaker Balam, nice. And then they healed up to ten, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're nowhere near on that front. So what we need to do is decide where we shoot. So what I want to do is see what angle we can get over here, but it doesn't look great. So what if... I'm going to try and grab disking everything in this, thing, in this angle. This might go badly. This went really badly. Because what I wanted to do is hit this slightly back. Yeah, we. Oh, I don't have enough cinder. <laughs> that doesn't matter in the first place. Okay. So let's just go for this then. And I uh, did not build enough in the cinder economy for this, which is a pretty big mistake. But it's fine. It's fine. Nothing to worry about here. <laughs> uh, who's Murray? Oh, yeah, Maximus. Um. I mean, Maxwell just pops out, hits Peacemaker Balam, and runs away. Might as well go back. Let's go back here into the the dense bit a little bit. Yeah, we've so we've almost guaranteed lost this game. Jester has more crew than us. We messed that pull up massively, and we also didn't have enough Cinder to do everything we wanted anyway. So this is something where the Cinder generation really does matter, because I hadn't paid enough attention to that. So we've got a good follow up, but. We're slightly behind on points now, but they don't have 
it doesn't look like they have any real healing left, just captain healing. So if we can get good use out of this, like obviously we're dead here. But if we can get good use out of these, we might be in with a chance, especially with Florio being our last unit. Because we don't have any Cinder to spend here, so we can start turn coating things like Chuck. So the interesting thing is Chuck's toss range is very similar to that, so. Yep, yeah, this is all fine. We knew this was happening. Where Beatrice moves is important, because depending on what Shrapnel can do. Yeah, Beatrice gets pulled. That's really good for, for Jester here. This game's not over yet. That's a, a completely fair stun, although I'd probably just try and kill it. Yeah, killing it makes more sense. Just heal more Cinder. Okay. So the question is, can we actually ever turn coat to Chuck and Co? So we're just out of range there. I think our range is slightly bigger. So if we were there... Yeah, I think we can do this. So let's, let's try and get this attack first. This is pretty reasonable. Of course we miss everything. That's the only reasonable option here. So we're going to go for the Chuck and Co. Steel. We're out of range of Toss It. I think we just have to go for the short range attack onto Beatrice here and just hope. Of course we missed that as well. <laughs> uh, sure, so what do we have to deploy? Nothing really. So we're going to actually potentially lose on points here because we need to get to the middle. So we are going to steal Chuck, potentially, but they could... Oh no, they're not going to quite have the angle, I don't think, are they? Or does that hit? Has Jester already checked it? Because if that hits, then we lose. But if we can get a Chuck and go, we're in a great spot. Tossing Shrapnel, yeah, that makes sense. Because they know that if they don't kill this, we're in a great spot. We've only got three crew left to their six, and I don't feel like we're out of this completely because they've got a few sort of... Ah, oh, there we go. So that's what I was talking about before and that not being optimal sometimes, but we can always try again. Oh, <laughs> no, we can't. Okay, so now I think we've lost this, but there's no sense in not trying because the only thing we've got left is Florio, but we can deploy that backwards. So if we just try and chip in damage as and when we can... That, I'm okay. Yeah, that's completely fine by me. It actually gives us a pretty good angle on this. If we can get here, we might be able to hit all three of these in one. Or even just two, but two's better than nothing. Okay, it's getting quite a complicated board state. Well, this. So if we. Come over here and just shoot this slightly. We missed that, of course, so shoot these. Got all of them. Thing is, now what do we even do with any of these? Do we. I think we have to grab disc because we need to get in there next turn. And then we just deploy ourselves out of Florio and work on optimism next turn. Here's the thing, right? This is exactly what I was talking about. This is the situation. <laughs> I can't use Florio ever. This is such a feel bad. I'm only ever going to go to four Cinder. I literally can't use Florio ever. <laughs> I've said this before, I feel like with your captain and a crew member, you should at least feel like you can activate your crew. But I can genuinely never activate Florio in this entire game. Because I played it late, and it ended up being completely worthless. 
So the only option now is to basically hope we get a crit onto Balam and then pull... Yeah, so now I can't actually... Oh. Sure. I mean, this doesn't matter at all. We can't do anything with Florio anyway. I'm just going to make sure they know that was a mistake. Yeah, there's no world in which I can actually get where I need to here. So there's this is GG. I can't stop Jester from scoring enough points here. So we just shoot this. Unless we get very lucky with this. Like it would be like miracle levels of lucky. Sure, let's try that. I don't think that's gonna do anything. <laughs> uh, I'll let Jinus just to finish me off in the command step. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. That was a good game. I like that. Like it definitely got close. I made quite a few misplays early on. But all in all, that was a lot of fun. So thank you very much for that game. And if I can get another one, I'll see you in that. And if not, I'll see you at the end of the video. Okay, so that was the game versus Jester. Hopefully you've enjoyed that. We did decide to leave it at just one game, but honestly, I think it was a great one. I found it quite mentally exhausting. There was a lot of things going on, a lot of moving parts, but it really did feel like a good game. There was a few times that I didn't activate Pyro when I thought I should have been able to because I spent too much Cinder on other things like Grav Disc. There were times where my positioning was a bit off, but all in all, I had a lot of fun, and I really think this new version of the game has got a lot of potential. So. If you enjoyed this, please do go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel. It really does mean a lot. I'm trying to get towards 200 subs by the time we get just around when all the new units release. So I've got about 30 odd to go and I've got a couple of weeks to do so. So it'd be great if you could go ahead and support that. If not, pop a like on the video. It really means a lot. Drop a comment. Let me know what you think my mistakes were. And if you're feeling very generous, the Patreon is the best possible way to support me. And anything you send over there is really, really appreciated. But most importantly, thank you for watching and have a good day.